two-thirds to one-third proportional relationship, but we emphasize the power, the size of the grill, the nostrils, which again are a der derivation of the original DBS from 10 years ago, where the nostrils used to sit here, and they've just <coughs> become more about function and defining and, de and describing the shape. If you, if you run your hands over this car versus DB11, you'll see a lot more of the sinuous nature of the body through the roof, etc., etc. It's a shorter front overhang, it's got a wider track, and a shorter tail, and it's a much stockier car than, than DB11, and you can see that, and you'll feel that when you drive it as well. Why is it a Superleggera? Because it's a lightweight structure on the upper, so carbon um, and bonded carbons to the bonded aluminium as well, so it's all about the lightweight nature of the car in its external panel work, and then obviously all of, all of the aerodynamics the curly Q, which is accentuated by the veins that we have, the sill that connects the front to the rear, and that air gap that you see, that slot below to release the high, the high pressure air, and as Paul would have mentioned, the underside of the car doing most of the aerodynamics. Then at the back, you really start to see the subtle blown nature of the arches because they're just pushing their way out of the body. It's got a fixed wing at the rear rather than the deploying girder. So this is giving you that huge um, downforce from the aeroplane at the back of the car coming in through the, the C ducts on the side. And then it's a working double diffuser at the back of the car. It's about showing the, the personality that the car has. And beauty, as you know, is, is a mathematical equation and nature does it perfectly. And Every single time we develop a car, we use that principle of beauty. So this is absolutely perfect light if you're standing here to look at the, the hood of the car and see those relationships, the form relationships, and the amount of time we spend to get all of the highlights to flow perfectly. Because the surfaces on an Aston Martin should appear natural. And there's nothing unexpected about the surface but when you combine all those surfaces and lines together you get that magical beautiful equation and that's what an Aston Martin is all about so perfect light for that inside it is about authenticity as ever if it looks like metal it is a piece of metal we use Scottish leather we use Scottish leather from Bridge of Weir because it's it's a perfect hide when it goes into the tannery. It doesn't have nicks or marks on it from barbed wire or mosquitoes because the cows have got long hair. Therefore, we don't have to print a grain on it. Therefore, it's more authentic. It doesn't get covered in plastic like most leathers. You can feel it. You can touch it. You can smell it. That's an important part of who we are. It takes about 200 hours to build one of our cars. And as you know, in, in 105 years, We've only made 85,000 of them. And that's two days of production for Toyota. So that's the beauty. That's the beauty of the inside of our cars. If you come to the factory, you will see guys and girls hand sewing the seats that have gone into this car. And the same person will do the right seat and the left seat because their line will be slightly different if it was someone else doing a right and a left. So it's like a fingerprint. Each car has a fingerprint, and that's what makes an Aston Martin very individual. I'm going to be quiet now and let you get out and drive because it is, it's a wonderful car, and I'll meet you at the lunch stop and get any feedback.